So, uh, I want to make a quick video on the uh, situation and my thoughts of Cadillac. Um, Cadillac, as you know, was started around, you know, 120 years ago. Uh, it was the original uh, company that Henry Ford started. And they have a, uh, a good heritage and they have a nameplate that was built up. And they have, you know, the nameplate is on the same level as Mercedes and Lexus. Uh, but the cars they've been putting out recently, like the Cadillac CT6, the XTS, uh, older Escalades, they just have been kind of sub par for the course. You know, if, if I had to make a uh, 1 to 10 rating, uh, 1 being the lowest, 10 being the highest on the luxury scale, and I wanted a seven. Um, a Cadillac would be a six or a five and a half. It's just almost there, and uh, that comes, of course, from General Motors. Uh, most American car companies are plagued with the uh, cost cutting, uh, or at least cost cutting in the wrong areas. Um, I guess General Motors is thinking, "Hey, Cadillac's been around 120 years. They have this nameplate. We have a few good selling models, like the." Uh, they used to have the SRX, now it's the XT5 and the uh, Escalade. And it's kind of a place to test out technology for General Motors. And they're thinking it's been around 120 years, probably never going to disappear. Uh, but if they want to up their sales, they're, they're just missing something. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I've been in a few Cadillac cars. I've uh, been in a few. They have, overall, they are pretty good. Uh, the quality is pretty good. It's just something about the luxury and the experience isn't exactly there. I was impressed with the SRX. It was good quality, very, very comfortable. Uh, it had nice wood on the steering wheel and it had um, really nice soft leather, but it was just a little bit of something that wasn't there. I don't know what it was. It, it just missing something. I'm not exactly sure uh, that may be a uh, more modern, a uh, well thought out interior, maybe a little uh, more little extra effort on the interiors. It's just something, uh, they're just missing something. I don't know what it is. Um, I guess they're missing the leadership that they need. Uh, they're missing the leadership, the, uh, they've got the know-how. They've got General Motors. They don't have, they're not, they're not lacking in money. They have General Motors budget of like, you know, 15 20 billion dollars i mean they could do whatever they wanted to they could they could move up to rolls royce level and, ex and complete, completely put rolls royce out of business they have that much money uh general motors is huge you know they're a global company um but they're just missing i don't think it's the name uh cadillac does not really have an old man image anymore you see a cadillac uh cts or one of the newark sedans or an escalade or any of their SUVs, you don't really think, uh, you don't really think, old man, you just, you just think, uh, good enough. Uh, when you step into a Cadillac, you, uh, well, here it is. You step into a Lexus, you think Lexus, you think quality, you think, wow. And a Cadillac, you get into it, you think, this is a really nice GM product. Um, and that's about where it stops. This is a nice GM. Um, and a lot of people get mad when you say that. They're like, uh, you're just hating on Cadillac. No, it's serious. Go sit, just go sit in one. You just have to sit in it and you'll realize that it's just a fancy GM product. Now they are getting better. The new Escalade uh, has a lot of good technology and they are uh, getting on Mercedes level. And uh, they are, um, they're, they are getting really good on their interiors. It doesn't look like a rebadged, GMC Denali with a little extra wood and Cadillac badges. They are getting pretty good. And the new electric cars like the Lyric, uh, they do have another, the Celestic, uh, supposed to be a sedan they're going to be making. This going to be like a Bentley levels, Maybach levels. Uh, we'll see um, if that happens or not. I would like for it to happen. Um, I'm not exactly a, an electric electrification fanboy, but if this really pushes Cadillac forward, um, I would, uh, it, it would push me to buy a Cadillac. I'm like, if I'm getting a watered-down version of the Celestic sedan, 
when I buy a CTS or if I buy a CT5, um, that would make me want one. Like if you buy a Lexus ES, you're like, I'm getting a watered down LS or I'm getting a watered down Lexus LC500. You're gonna be thinking of it from that perspective. I'm, I'm getting a little bit lesser version of, you know, a Bentley or whatever. But when you're getting a, uh, essentially a stronger version of a Chevy or a GMC, uh, it's just the wrong, coming from the wrong perspective. So that's what a, uh, one of those fancy new cars would do for them. I used to be a Cadillac fanboy. I used to like, the only, from when I was 15 years old up till a few months ago, the only cars I would have wanted to drive or buy new or any cars I would have bought in the future would have been Cadillac. I was just, you know, looking back at the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, even some of the 80s, and, uh, you know, I like kind of older, like 90s and early 2000s Cadillacs are just nice, comfortable cars. That's, you know, look in the heritage they have, I really would have wanted a uh, Cadillac, and that's all I would have wanted. But when I looked at a Lexus and I looked at Genesis and even Mercedes, I don't like German cars at all, uh, just because they're German, uh, it's part of that American coming out of me. Um, you just look at those other cars and you're like, I don't care about brand heritage, uh, you know, that's just, the heritage, you know, it's like Warren Buffett said, you, it takes a lifetime to build a reputation, but you can lose it in a day, and Cadillac has kind of lost that reputation, uh, they still have a good name, just like Sears has a good name, J.C. Penney has a good name, it's just they've kind of tarnished uh, their name to where someone like, they have to clean it up and they have to really, to get someone like me who does like Cadillac and would consider buying one, but to push them over the edge into uh, Cadillac land and to, uh, you know, a Cadillac customer, um, it would, uh, it would take really outperforming and undercutting the Germans, the Japanese, and Koreans. You really have to undercut it. Um, so that's basically my thoughts on Cadillac. Um, I'm not exactly sure what they should do. If they had called me and said, hey, what should we do to revive our brand? I would say, okay, let's go back and let's look at the history of Cadillac and what a Cadillac means. Cadillac doesn't mean uh, super comfortable. Cadillac doesn't mean necessarily floaty boaty Cadillac Fleetwoods from the 90s and 80s. Uh, Cadillac means quality. It means standard of the world. I would tell them that. Let's look back at this and let's take the new Cadillac and let's see if it lives up to those old school standards that Cadillac had earned under the uh, leadership of Henry M. Leland. Uh, probably one of the best uh, one of the heroes in the automotive world. He's up there with uh, Walter Chrysler and Henry Ford uh, because he started Cadillac, he started Lincoln. He, uh, he was the one that brought uh, he, he was the one who brought uh, basically a standardization, like all parts could be interchanged on all the Cadillac cars. You could take uh, the uh, the cylinder, uh, I'm trying to think of a name of an engine part. You just take a part of an engine, you could put it on any Cadillac you wanted to. Uh, it's something that hadn't been seen because he worked at a, a big gun manufacturer like Smith & Wesson or uh, Remington or one of those big companies that, and gun companies did that, the uh, arms cut companies did stuff like that. So he brought that perspective to the car industry, and that's what changed it completely for everyone from Mercedes to Toyota to, uh, you know, Ford. I mean, his Ford hated Henry Leland, that's why he fired him after he bought Lincoln. Uh, but Henry hated Henry, <laughs> they were, you know, enemies. But you just go back and look at that heritage and say, what does it mean? It's like when, if I was to walk into a McDonald's that's struggling or that's not clean, or, the, or they're just saying, the manager's saying, what should we do? I'd say, let's look back at what Ray Kroc and the original McDonald's brothers envisioned for McDonald's. Back on the tennis court, when they were setting up their plans, let's move back to that pure state, you know. As time goes on, a lot of companies, and some are immune to it, like Coca-Cola and Pepsi and a few others are immune to it because they just have this classic that the leadership understands. But 
you go back to that pure form and you bring it back and you distill it down and you just get back to the roots, get back to the basics, get back to your fundamentals. Don't be, you know, wondering about all these other little nuances. Just get back to the fundamentals of what luxury means or whatever they're trying to do. Uh, get back to what Cadillac means. So that's what I have to say. That's my uh, word of advice or my overview of that particular market segment. Uh, I may do these if these are popular and successful. I may do them some more. And I may even invest in a better setup with a real microphone and maybe a studio or something. I think the car is a pretty good studio. Uh, it's pretty comfortable. It's quiet. Um, and it's a car. It kind of fits with the image. So there you go. Um, have a good night. And uh, I'll see you soon.